pesky residue puddle under the bed Portal to another rail My bed where the creatures rule And the dust bunny pawns are proud to preach to fools And the sock puppet shows begin to paint the groom So when you awake from a deep sleep Lying in your urinated sheets Just remember that there's a monster Living under your bed There's a monster what if the abuse is a man? Brian Stephen Lawson started getting daily beatings from his wife of 10 years. He had a son with her and did not want to leave his son in the care of this woman. He chose to stay. This would be a deadly decision. We are also going to discuss another domestic abuse case that involved Alex Gill. Alex had deep gashes on his arms, burns upon burns, and according to his family, he smelt like he was dead. But his years of isolation and abuse weren't in the work of a kidnapper that came from the woman he loved. Hello, my name is Holly, and this is the Murder She Shed, the place we discuss the dead right from my little she shed. No subscribe, do subscribe, I don't care. Either way, join us for a rarely heard crime right from my crime lair. Let's begin. For Brian and Chandra, it was love at first sight. Brian enjoyed the fire in Chandra when they first met. Chandra was in the National Guard going into her second tour when she broke her neck. Chandra was prescribed excessive amounts of prescription pain medication and became an addict. Brian was born with a severe club foot and he endured multiple surgeries through the years. Around the same time Chandra got addicted to prescription medication, so did Brian. After constant use, their bodies grew a tolerance and they would increase their dose. Eventually, they got to the point of having to crush the pills and shoot them up for any kind of relief. Chandra ended up pregnant and this is when Brian decided that day he was going to end his drug abuse. He told God if he would help him take the needles out of his arm that he wouldn't put them back. I definitely understand that problem because I actually had that same kind of addiction, prescription drug abuse, and I have been clean six years, so I know how hard it is, you know, especially right at first. So I give Brian praise for that. That, that is actually a great thing that he was able to get clean for his son. He worked hard at getting clean, and by the time his son was born, he had kicked the habit. Chandra, on the other hand, her addiction only grew. Chandra had bipolar disorder and the drugs combined with her disorder seemed to increase her violence towards Brian. Chandra had a child before she met Brian. He confessed to the constant fighting that went on in the house. Chandra would shoot up to three to four times daily and if she ran out of medication, she would become violent to Brian. She would often punch him, kick him, and she would take a baseball bat and hit him with that too. With the baseball bat, she would hit Brian on his club foot, which she knew would be the most painful to Brian. On the day Brian ended up murdering his wife, she told him that she was going to blow his brains out so his mother could clean up the mess. First, their young son was in their bedroom while they were fighting in the living room. The family have a surveillance camera in the house that had been put there because of an earlier attempted break-in. The day of her murder was all caught on that video. You can see their son holding his ears because he can hear his mother yelling. You can see her screaming into Brian's face as he is sitting in a recliner in the living room. You can see her viciously punching and kicking Brian and trying to hit him with the bat. She let Brian know that after she kills him, she was going to go in the bedroom and get their son and slice his arteries and then slice hers. Brian is just seen cowering down to her and trying to protect his club foot. Chandra then retreats to the bedroom and brings their son back into the living room. When her back is turned, you can see Brian reaching for a G-U-N behind the couch. And when she starts hitting Brian again, then he shoots her hitting her in the stomach with her young son just a few feet away from her. Brian grabs his son, picks him up, and then calls 911. Chandra lays dying in the floor as their son looks down at his mother. The whole video can be seen on A&E's Accused, Guilty, or Innocent. Of course, I cannot play it or they will copyright me, 
but you can go check it out for yourself. Brian states that he felt he had no choice, that he was scared and did not know what else to do. He stated that he was protecting his son. Brian would later find out that the son he had protected was not actually his biological son after another man came forward. Sandra's oldest son, James' stepson, has forgiven Brian for his mom's death. Brian did take a plea deal of 15 years but could be released anytime as of February of 2022. He's already served three years and his plea deal stated that he was eligible for parole after he served 20% of his sentence. It is so sad that that case had to come to that. I don't guess it had to. I'm sure there was other choices. It is the choice that he made. The whole case is sad. It said that she had to lose her life. It said that she was an abuser and he felt he had no choice. It said that the drug addictions had to happen after she got all the military and hurt herself. Of course, she made that choice to continue it. I mean, like I said, you can always stop. I did not easy, but you can't. You have to it in your head. No one else can convince you to quit. Only you can convince yourself to quit. And just lay it down, walk away, and say, that's it. I'm done. It's rolled me too long. Now I'm going to roll it. Here's the second case. This case is intense. I mean, it is awful. Alex Gill was 10 days away from dying because of domestic abuse. It was one of the worst cases of a man being abused that I have ever heard. And you won't believe this story. It is literally heartbreaking. Even if you've heard this story, stay with me till the end. I have some new information on this case. Alex was born prematurely on August 17, 1995, along with his twin brother. Weighing just two pounds, he was placed in intensive care and underwent multiple operations as a baby. His mother did not think that he would survive. When Alex was 16, he met a girl named Jordan Worth. They both live in the UK. Just looking at Jordan, people would think how sweet and innocent she looked, and when she spoke, it seemed as if she was quite and timid type girl. After they had been together for a bit, Jordan started saying, I don't like that color on you, or I don't like your hair like that. You should wear it this way. The control started out in a subtle way. Alex just believed this was normal behavior and he would usually just make the changes she suggested. His family started seeing warning signs and they tried to warn Alex, but he was so smitten he didn't see her in that light. On one occasion, Alex's family treated her to a night at the theater in London, only for her to disappear from the hotel in the middle of the night sparking a frantic search before reappearing in the hotel lobby an hour later just laughing. Another time, she ruined Alex's 18th birthday party by screaming abuse at a female family friend who she had grown jealous of. Alex eventually tried to break things off, but Jordan came back with a bombshell revelation that she was pregnant and returned to his life a year later with baby Thomas or TJ, who was born in May 2014. Then Jordan began distancing Alex from his family. She encouraged him to move away from his family. After moving, Alex got a new job, which he actually loved. Jordan was going to college at the same time. Jordan began accusing him of seeing other women. She would check his phone. She made him change his phone number because of that, and so his family couldn't contact him either. She even began posting on his Facebook, and she would post ugly comments to his family and friends on Facebook and say, I don't want to see you anymore and things like that. So they thought Alex didn't want any contact. She made him get rid of his PlayStation so he couldn't talk to anybody that way either. Jordan became so controlling, she took Alex's wallet away, forcing him to quit the job he loved and instead accompany her to classes at the university she attended where she could keep a watchful eye on him. Around this time, the physical abuse began. She started hitting Alex with her hands. His kind-hearted nature just accepted it and he did not ever yell or lay his hands on her. She then broke his mobile phone. She falsely told Skill that his grandfather died and then berated him for caring about his family. One night when Alex was sleeping, she hit him in the head with a hammer. 
He woke up, had blood rolling down his face, and was confused at what had happened. The hammer became a regular occurrence. Jordan poured boiling hot water on his arms and provided him with cling wrap to cover his burns. Pouring hot water at Alex as he slept was a regular hobby for Jordan. She blacked his eyes on multiple occasions and witnesses often saw Alex walking with a limp or his arm in a sling. His neighbors could often hear the fighting and would call authorities. Alex would always deny she had abused him and Jordan and him both said that it was him that did it to himself. Yes, he would pour boiling water on himself and punch himself in the eye, make a black eye. I can just totally see that. That's really believable, isn't it? Jordan began to not let him eat. She controlled everything that went into his body. She began getting off on stabbing Alex. He would not even be allowed to seek medical treatment. She knocked out his teeth with a hairbrush and he was forced to sleep on the floor. One night, when they went to a carnival, for some odd reason, Jordan made Alex swallow a whole bottle of sleeping medication. Alex said he didn't hardly remember being there or how he got home. Jordan became pregnant again, and Alex thought it would make her ease up on him some after she had had the baby. Three days after having their daughter, things began to escalate. After boiling some water for the baby's bottles, she poured the whole thing onto Alex's arm. After this, she took a huge knife from the kitchen and started stabbing him. Neighbors called authorities again that night. The officers went into the apartment where there was blood all in the bathroom and a bleeding and burnt Alex claiming again that he did this to himself. Alex only weighed 98 pounds at this point and it was obvious to the officers something was very off. The officer knew without a doubt it was abuse and possibly some of the worst abuse he had ever seen. After three years of abuse and an officer that refused to give up until Alex confessed, Alex finally admitted to the abuse. After Alex went to the hospital, the doctor stated that he was 10 days away from death. His family was finally able to see him after two years. Jordan was arrested. In April 2018, Jordan was sentenced to seven and a half years in prison. At her trial, Jordan admitted to controlling Alex, wounding with intent and causing grievous bodily harm. Right after the release of Alex's documentary, somehow Jordan started posting on her Facebook from prison. She was posting about women being abused by men. There are several posts from her doing this. She was released in 2022 after serving half of her sentence. An indefinite restraining order prevents her from making any type of contact with Alex. On her Facebook, since her release, she had posted a picture of her and her mom on Mother's Day. Her with her best friend. Her best friend writes how she always has supported her, which is just sickening. She has even posted herself with a new man in her life, and that's just one week ago that she posted that. All I can say is that new man better watch his back. I did this video for awareness of the fact that men do get abused too. Often men are just laughed at when they say that they are abused. Oftentimes these abusive behaviors start with coercive control. Coercive control is basically a form of mind control. It is a form of micromanaging everything that another person does. Even if it never escalates to physical abuse, this type of control is still abuse. Some common examples of coercive behavior are isolating you from friends and family, depriving you of basic needs such as food, monitoring you via online communication tools or spyware, taking control over aspects of your everyday life such as where you can go, who you can see, what you can wear, and when you can sleep. Depriving you access to support services such as medical services. Repeatedly putting you down such as saying you're worthless. Humiliating, degrading, or dehumanizing you. Controlling your finances. Making threats or intimidating you. If you think someone is being abused, whether man, woman, or child, please report it.
and know the signs of coercive control so you won't walk right into that type of relationship. And please, if you need help, reach out to someone. Even if you are a man, don't be embarrassed to reach out for help. Hope y'all have a wonderful week. I will leave y'all with some bloopers. I love y'all. Bye. Disorder in the drugs combined with her do- daughter. With her daughter. They both live in the UK. The OK. OK would be Oklahoma. It's a little bit different place than UK. Sorry, people from UK. Restraining order protects her from making any type of... She chose to stay. This would be a doodly decision. Deadly. What a doodly decision is, but it don't sound good. Doodly accident. I know those can't be good. I told my husband the other day when I die, you better put in my coffin several bags of Cheetos. You know, I might want to snack when I'm in there. You never know. I love Cheetos. You guys don't understand. When my husband's at work, fire station, I literally sleep with a bag of Cheetos. Oh, that's weird, isn't it? Talk about all these weird things that people do. I'm right up there with them. Because to sleep with Cheetos, probably one you've never heard before. But I told my husband, he's got to put them in my coffin. And he told me, this is what he told me. Put by me one of those little bags of Cheetos and put in there because Cheetos are too expensive right now. What? I told my son, you're going to have to buy the big bag of Cheetos because your dad's being tight with my coffin. Dr. Pepper and Cheetos are just my thing. I'm actually trying to go without Cheetos because I've been gaining weight. So I haven't bought any lately and I am in complete Cheeto withdrawal. That's all I'm thinking about and probably why I'm talking about Cheetos right now. Here, so I'm going to tell them bye. Love you guys and I hope you all have a blessed week. And I'm going to have a babysitter the next three weeks. And he probably won't be happy about that. My son is coming and babysitting my dogs while we're gone. Boy, am I going to miss him. I have to say, I will greatly miss him. My son will take good care of him while I'm gone. I already know that. They drive him nuts because his husband wants to do the four-wheeler. Like, he wants to at least do it two or three times a day. <laughs> we're going to go boom boom because we can't wait. Boom boom. We can't wait to boom boom. Let's go boom boom. <laughs> Just remember that there's a monster living under your bed.